Thank you very much indeed, and welcome everybody to this uh, debate today, Moral Truths and Moral Tyrannies. What are we going to be talking about today? Um, well, we're going to be talking about the idea that absolute moral claims seem to be making a, uh, a resurgence, along with demands for action in response to that. Yet, at the same time, uh, many proclaim the value and importance of upholding diverse cultural outlooks with sometimes radically different moral codes. So to avoid this hypocrisy, should we give up the belief in a universal moral code and see morality, as Nietzsche argued, as the product of a monotheistic culture, which over the centuries has often led to violence and even warfare? Or should we reassert confidence in our moral framework and deny alternative accounts? Is a universal moral code a guise for the tyranny of Western Christian ethics, or is it the cornerstone of a fair and just society in any culture and at any time? So that's our uh, debate for the day. And uh, joining me, I have three eminent thinkers to uh, crunch through this fundamental question of our times. Tim Williamson, who's the Wiccan Professor of Logic at the University of Oxford. Welcome, Tim, who's made many, many important contributions to analytic philosophy, especially in the areas of epistemology and logic. We have Maria Bagramian, who's the uh, professor of American philosophy, and I think one of the world's leading experts on moral and epistemological relativism. Her work focusing on contemporary epistemology, relativism, and one of her recent uh, projects, When Experts Disagree, quote unquote, perish the thought, received three million euros of funding from the European Commission, which she's obviously spent partly on, on her fantastic wardrobe for this evening. And then, last but not least, we have David Friedman, very well-known uh, theorist, uh, known for work on uh, anarcho-capitalism. And of course, uh, many of you may know his book, The Machinery of Freedom, which has become a kind of go-to text in that uh, subject area. So, so welcome to all three of you. In a second, I'm going to ask our three distinguished panellists to, as it were, set out their stall on this question of uh, moral truths and moral tyrannies. You know, the absolutes and the relatives. So, Tim, if you're ready, I'm going to come straight to you first, if you don't mind, and um, I guess give us a bit of orientation in terms of uh, your thinking on this subject, which, as you know, has been set up as a kind of uh, dilemma of some kind, you know, true, absolute truths and, and relative tyrannies and so on. So, love to hear your thoughts on that, Tim. Yeah, well, the, I think the first thing to say is that the the usual re reasons for uh, denying that uh, morality is absolute and, and universal are um, fallacious. Uh, so the usual kind of reasons have to do with um, disagreements on morality that are irreconcilable in the sense that that's, it's clear that, that neither side is ever going to convince uh, the other. But those disagreements do not show that there's no truth of the matter. Uh, because after, after all, for, we have irreconcilable disagreements, uh, for example, between um, evolutionary biologists and uh, creationist fundamentalists about the theory of evolution. But that doesn't show that there's no uh, truth of uh, that matter. Um, and in fact, in, in some cases, it's not just that there may be a truth, um, but that we, we can know what it is. Although the fact that a truth is non-relative does not mean that it's easy to know. And of course, uh, physics is an example, uh, which is full of uh, things that are very hard to know, but nevertheless, there is a, a truth of the matter. Uh, another thing that's worth bearing in mind is that, w that when one says that a moral question has a true answer, one isn't automatically claiming to know what the answer is. Although absolutism about morality is sometimes uh, portrayed as um, a sort of arrogant view, I think it's actually the, the humbling uh, view because uh, it implies that some of our moral beliefs may be just false. Um, Whereas, by contrast, as a relativist uh, view, it lets us off the, the hook by uh, insisting that our, our moral beliefs are fine relative to our own perspective. I mean, that, there's, that we can't be uh, falling short of some absolute uh, standard. Um, but I don't, I don't want to push uh, 
too much skepticism about um, knowledge of uh, moral truths, because I think that, that, I mean, there are some moral truths which um, it's pretty plausible are known in most uh, societies. And an example of that would be that uh, torturing children for fun is that's a pretty widely um, known uh, truth uh, amongst, in human societies. I think another point that needs to be remembered is that the absoluteness of morality does not imply that it, morality consists of simple rules. Um, and the, I mean, the absolute rightness or wrongness of an action may depend in very complex ways on the circumstances in which the action is done. And by the way, that's a completely different kind of dependence from its dependence on the circumstances of the person judging the action, and because those are not what's relevant. It's the circumstances of the action itself. And so uh, an example of, of that would be that that might be, for, let's say, that euthanasia is absolutely right in some circumstances and uh, absolutely uh, wrong in, in others. So it may be that um, some very complex uh, morality is in fact absolutely true, but doesn't consist of simple moral rules. Thanks. That's uh, great, Tim. Thank you very much. I mean, you may be able to see my piano in the background, and that's certainly an instrument I use to torture my children with for fun when I play <laughs> that. Um, okay, very, very struck by also your point about um, uh, absolute truth not necessarily being easy to know. So maybe we'll, we'll come back to that one. Um, thank you very much, Tim. So, Maria, can I can I move on to you and just hear your kind of opening thoughts on this uh, subject? So, uh, I my thinking about ethics, morality, and relativism and absolutism starts from the point that Tim actually rejected, namely the prevalence and significance of disagreement on ethical issues. I think. Uh, Disagreement about ethics is quite different from disagreement between scientists and uh, religious fundamentalists on evolution, because in those cases, there are methodologies for establishing what is scientifically correct and incorrect. And uh, also there are, the, there are the presuppositions that the uh, religious fundamentalists bring to the topic of their disagreement. While in ethics, even when we have well-informed equally uh, educated uh, people coming from similar backgrounds, we can still have disagreement. And these are the cases of intractable or deep disagreements that don't apply to the same extent in the natural sciences. So how do we deal with these deep disagreements? There are a few options. One is to go relativist and to say they are all right, all these positions are correct, each according to their cultural context or background. That's an easy option. It resolves or dissolves the disagreement, but I don't find it satisfactory and we can discuss that later on. Second option is just to go skeptical and say, oh, there's no such truth in ethics. Uh, it's all subjective. Um, that also, for various reasons, is not very satisfactory. Third option is what Tim suggested, that uh, we say, yeah, there, there are truths in ethics. They are difficult to find, uh, but we have made progress in ethics. Uh, look, I mean, look at Aristotle or Kant and their views of uh, women or slavery or uh, race and compare it to what we believe now. These are very clear cases of moral progress. So there is such a thing as truth in the morality and we are moving towards that. Uh, so I do agree to that extent with Tim, but I don't think we can be absolutist about ethics. And here comes my own spiel on the issue. I'm not a relativist or a realist. I'm a pluralist about ethics. Uh, so uh, what does it mean to be a pluralist about ethics? Uh, it means to say that there could be more than one right answer to the question, to the ethical question. How should we live? How should we conduct ourselves? How should we treat? each other. Uh, we can rule out the wrong answers, and yes, we do rule out the answer that it's right to uh, torture children, but there are many right answers on how we should treat our children, uh, and, and the pluralist affirms that sort of plurality of truths rather than absolute truth. Thank you very much for, for that, Maria, and when we get into our first um, theme, I may come back to you to kick off, because I find very interesting this idea of um, ethics being different from science, presumably because of an absence of empirical 
data to ground it in the same way. So when we start talking about what is ethics actually grounded in, maybe I can uh, mm -hmm. come back to you on that one. And very interesting to the idea that there can be more than one right answer or that right answers can compete in some way or, or, um, or coexist in some way. Thank you very much, Maria. And I will move on now then to, to you, David, if that's okay. Where Just tell us where you're coming from on your... Uh, uh, I'm, also a a mor I'm a moral realist. Okay. Uh, my position, as far as I can tell so far, must be very similar to Tim's, okay. uh, although we did not conspire in advance, that my view is that there are true moral statements, that there's a moral reality out there in the same sense that there's a physical reality out there, and that we perceive the physical reality with our senses, we perceive the moral reality with what you might think of as a moral sense, what people will sometimes call moral intuition, that we test both of those by consistency, that we could, it could be that my perception of physical reality is wrong. I could be a brain in a vat, it could all be illusions. But the best test I can make is to make sure that my different sources of information on physical reality are consistent. I don't see a lion on the dining room table. When I reach out, I don't touch it. It doesn't scratch me. I don't smell it. Other pe I don't see other people seeing the lion. If I meet someone who claims there's a lion on the table and is serious, I conclude he's insane, that he's not actually perceiving reality. I think if you look at moral reality, not in terms of high-level statements, such as what rights do we have, but in terms of actual perception, in this fully described situation, did this person act correctly? Was that good or bad? Which gets back to Tim's example of torturing children, uh, that I think you get a very large level of agreement across people uh, and across culture. And that a lot of what looks like disagreement about morality is either disagreement about physical reality, facts that are relevant to moral reality, that King James believed it was right to burn witches, not because his moral beliefs were different, but because he believed in witchcraft, and we don't. Uh, or else they are disagreements not about the underlying facts, but about the theories built on top of them. So that for about 2,000 years, uh, educated people believed that the Earth was at the center of the universe, surrounded by crystal spheres, the Ptolemaic view, uh, containing the planets and uh, the moon and the sun. Uh, but those people saw the same things. They saw the sun the same way we do. They saw objects the same way we do. They had just constructed a different high-level picture of the whole pattern. And in the same sense, I think that moral disagreements very largely uh, maybe entirely, I'm not sure, come down to people constructing different high-level structures on the basis of their perception of both moral and physical reality. If you really get into political arguments, you find that the people very rarely agree about the physical facts, uh, quite aside from the moral facts. So that would be my position, which is what sometimes described as moral realism. Very interesting. I find the idea of uh, your, your opening phrase, moral reality sort of exists almost in the same way as physical reality, fascinating. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.